Hello traders, welcome to the weekly level game setups volume 245. Ilya here, you know what we're going to be doing, having a look at the markets, how they developed this week, what kind of opportunities we had, and most importantly, what we can expect for the upcoming week. Now, this week I went on a trip to Croatia and I'm super happy I did because the market was choppy as hell didn't move at all we are getting some clear bias for next week which is nice but then this week like last week was pretty bad so let me know if that was the case also for your pair so i'm pretty happy that i stayed away from the markets last week right now of the month of june should be nice let's hope it ends up on a positive note so for that let's jump into the analysis course starting with the economic calendar first to try to frame our trading week so we have on monday um we don't have much on monday honestly we just have a speech from cat so monday definitely could be a skippable day tuesday cat again cat cpi so if you're trading cat this week watch out because monday and tuesday are going to be huge and then of course on tuesday we also get uh, a usd consumer confidence um major impact news which is going to bring in some volume wednesday we have Aussie CPI so if you're trading the Aussie you gotta wait for that to get released because that is very likely when the Aussie dollar is going to move and then new home sales all the way at 5 p.m so definitely could be tradable usually Wednesdays are always tradable because that is the day at which the market should potentially be moving Thursday uh, GDP unemployment claims a lot of USD news pending home sales as well so Thursday is going to be potentially very volatile especially during US session and also friday we have pc price index and this consumer sentiment so looks pretty good honestly we have news uh for the us dollar every single day apart from monday right we have here one that is very early so that's that's kind of strange so th there aren't any massive news to be expecting like of course aussie cpi if you're trading the aussie cat cpi for trading the cat but apart from that nothing really important so we have a green light to be trading every single day without worrying about news. All right, as always, then starting with the dollar. So what we see so far this month, we're having an overall bullish candle, which is pretty nice. And we're coming from actually taking out this previous monthly low, which was a weekly swing low. That's great. You can see we took it out, printed a very nice rejection. Uh, the previous week we had a very nice run into the highs and then this week we're also continuing higher right and we are overall continuing with that bullish momentum what i really love to see is also that we have a weekly bullish imbalance now however if you look at this last candle here it already made a massive week lower and it already expanded way higher so for this precise week to make a massive pullback like that it does not make a lot of sense so just because we have this weekly bullish imbalance here, that does not mean it potentially will get retested. Then, of course, we drop to uh, the daily time frame uh, from Monday until Wednesday to super chop and then Thursday popped. And then also Friday popped to take out this high as liquidity. In the meantime, also forming a daily bullish imbalance. So again, we can see weekly is bullish. So monthly is bullish, weekly is bullish, daily is bullish. And right now, on the forty time frame, we we're also pretty bullish. Now, I want you to pay attention that we just took daily liquidity, so potentially we'd like to have a daily rebalance or a potential daily zone to be trading from. Now, what we have right now is so many zones. So as you can see here, we have this forward imbalance, then below the daily, then below the weekly. So what is going to be happening here is simply the market will tell you which one is going to hold. Because very likely we're going to tap into this forward zone. If the market continues to make new forward zones and even eventually a new daily zone, then that's great. This means that this zone is overall holding. But if this one taps, maybe reacts, and then it starts rushing lower, so it fails to follow through from that zone, then that means the market might want to go to the daily. And then, of course, if the daily starts to rock higher, that's great. But even if daily, for example, fails to hold, then that could mean we're going to be going to the weekly. Okay. So I don't want to say right now, because I cannot, which zone is going to hold. Right now, we have these three zones across different time frames. Okay, so we have to also wait to see what uh, Monday will do, because if Monday, so we have to mark this invalidation level, this is the invalidation level for a potential new daily bullish imbalance. 
So if Monday does something like that, okay, and then we have a potential daily imbalance right here, I would love to have this because Tuesday is potentially going to be a great day, all right? But if the market starts very bearish and starts pulling back very sharply, then of course, I'm going to be looking at this daily imbalance, right? And then of course, trying to adapt. So overall, DXY, really bullish. The last thing we did is actually take out this liquidity. So I do expect some sort of a rebalance. Now, will this rebalance be this forward time frame? And then to push higher from there, will actually the market make a new daily bullish imbalance on Monday so we can trade it on Tuesday? Or will the market actually pull back towards this daily zone? We have to wait and we have to see. But overall, the whole context, the whole picture is kind of clear to me. Overall bullish dollar. So let's see how the other pairs are actually looking like according to that bias on the DXY. Euro USD pretty much quite the same. We took out this previous monthly high and the market is right now very nicely launching potentially towards the previous monthly low. Dropping onto the weekly time frame, these are very likely some sort of uh, swing highs and lows. There is this one, very nice spike, very nice rejection. We were actually having this weekly imbalance. The market tapped, it tried to push, it failed. And right now it's pretty much running lower. Now, what we also have on EU is this very nice weekly bearish imbalance. So again, the question is, is the market really going to pull back all the way up here? It's definitely possible. So how would you know? Well, the lower time frames are going to show you. Okay. So as we start dropping right now to the daily, let's just mark that this is our main liquidity point. And then of course we do have uh, this low, but again, you want to take it step by step. Don't just say it all the way down. Take it step by step. Like first is going to be that low, then this low, then potentially this low, and then this one. Okay. For your liquidity targets. Now, again, this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, nothing. And then Thursday, we popped, but there were no setups. And then on Friday, the market just launched lower in London, and then it did nothing. So it was super choppy. However, we did form a daily bearish imbalance. That could be, once again, something that we can trade from. And just above it, we have the weekly. Okay. And then we dropped to the following time frame, and very likely, similarly to the, to the DXY, we also have this four hourly zone. Okay. So when you have a situation like this, it's just super important to be reactive, not to really try to predict. All right. We're going to go here. We're going to move from there. No, you just have to be reactive because we do not know where the market will react from. Is it going to tap into this folly and start pushing lower? Is it going to tap into the folly, potentially react and push into the daily and then push lower? Or is it even going to do something like this and then push lower? Okay. Those are all my outcomes. I really like that EU is also overall giving me bearish signs. I don't see anything bullish right now. There is nothing to stop price on the weekly and push it higher. There is nothing to stop price on the daily and potentially push it higher. We're already getting some sort of slight bit of an order flow. We had this very nice daily bearish imbalance, pulled back, it pushed lower. And right now we're making another one. So I really do like it. I really do like it for shorts. The main question is where? Are we going to trade it from? So I would definitely love to see some sort of a pullback towards hourly zone or daily zone, and then potentially to be looking to um, short it from there. Of course, for example, if you think about the weekly development, Monday and Tuesday, if they start bullish, making that weekly high, then potentially Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday could be flushing. So that would be the perfect development of the week. But if we already start flushing, even on Monday, then of course we can evaluate, we can keep following the flow and uh, looking for those new imbalances to be created. So for now, those are my points of interest, mainly interested in this folly and the daily zone. And then as the market gets into those zones, I'm going to be there watching the lower timeframes for potential shifts. Let's have a look at GU. So similar once again, we are taking out that previous monthly high. Now, why am I marking these previous monthly highs and lows? Well, because they are uh, very important liquidity points, because if you have a previous monthly high, then that's going to be a weekly, very big high. And it's going to be a daily, very big high as well. So those are very important liquidity points. Now we did take this one out and we started to fail to push higher. However, the problem with GU was that it has this very strong weekly bullish imbalance. Now, as you can see this week, it doesn't look like so far that we want to push higher from that imbalance. And again, you know, the DXY right now is overall strong. 
you see euro is weak and it doesn't make a lot of sense fundamentally even in terms of interest rates for the pound to be pushing higher it should be pushing lower in terms of the macroeconomics okay but still it is a little bit it's slight bit choppy so we're tapping into this weekly zone okay but we're having a supply and demand sandwich why because the market taps into a weekly zone but immediately above it there is a daily zone so right now we're gonna battle and as you can see the market pulls back into that daily we did have a lot of uh, resistance here we had this very nice buy to sell as the sort of an order block the market taps and rush rush slower to be taking this as liquidity in the same time also making another daily bearish imbalance so this to me right now is pretty much bearish order flow the weekly tapped reacted and right now we're coming at it again so is the market going to reverse from here or is it going to be continuing with the bearish order flow i do like the bearish order flow a little bit more so if i am to look at something that could potentially be our our ob okay this would be a wonderful trade idea overall aligning with our macroeconomic outlook as well and uh, if i drop to the volatile time frame you can see on gu there is uh, yeah pretty much there is nothing to be looked at on the volatile time frame so i'm going to stay on the daily for now and this is my setup on GU. it looks pretty good it's just on the daily you can see i'm not dropping to the volatile to the hourly to the 15 minute to look for something i only drop to those time frames when i have something clear from the monthly to the volatile time frame if i don't then i don't go forward to the lower time frames because very likely i'm gonna mess up Okay, so what I also do like is that this weekly zone already tapped and reacted and failed to follow through because if this weekly zone was going to hold, the market should have tapped into this daily, reacted, and then pretty much started popping higher, but it did not. So right now I am more bearish than bullish on GU. Let me know what you also think, but this is my setup. And of course, flow with it. If it starts like impulsing lower, making new bearish imbalances, you just got to follow them. You just got to follow the order flow and the momentum. That's you. Bearish bias. Wonderful setup here. Hopefully we get that pullback and then potential short. Well, well, Aussie dollar is just stingy this month. As you can see, last month we had a lovely bullish candle. This month, mm, not moving. Why? Haven't taken previous daily, uh, previous monthly high. Haven't taken previous monthly low. We are still an inside bar. So this month, the Aussie is not moving, right? If the monthly is such a small candle, the weekly is going to be a consolidation. If the weekly is a consolidation, let me just mark this real quick, because that, that has been a little zone that I've been looking forward to tap for some time right now. It just doesn't go. Now, if the weekly is a consolidation like this, that means the daily is going to be a large range. And as you can see, when you have a large range, you are having bullish imbalance here. Oops. Bullish imbalance here, disrespected, right? Bullish, not respected. Then up and then down, bearish, disrespected. Bullish, disrespected. Bearish, disrespected. And right now we're having a bullish. This is a consolidation. <laughs> Crazy drawing I make here. But that is a consolidation. That is a consolidation that you cannot trust. You cannot trust this. So right now, even if I try to force it, there is this daily bullish imbalance but as you can see the market tapped it on thursday and friday is still getting deep inside so very likely it's going to be one of those situations at which the, the imbalance just doesn't hold why because it's a consolidation so for aussie dollar we have cpi for the aussie i believe on wednesday so i'm not gonna touch the aussie until wednesday because why would i touch it this is just a massive consolidation and even if i drop to the faulty time i'm like what the hell did we do this week like it's just crazy we had a oh, we had an overall rally higher and then nothing so right now we're tapping into this daily zone but this is not to me a bullish signal if i want to go long i need to see four hourly bullish imbalances four hourly breaks of structures going higher to really show me that it's ready to commit to potentially go higher okay However, you know, again, DXY, let's not forget, it's bullish. We're having an overall slight bit of a bearishness on the major pairs. But this one is just choppy. This one is just choppy. So I am simply flowing with this one and waiting for something to happen. So waiting for a fully clear trend 
Now, don't get me wrong, you could potentially get some intraday setups, but even in terms of the intraday setups, even you can see here on the Fawali, we're having a massive range on the daily, and then the Fawali is also making ranges like this. And then it just does massive move down, massive move up, and then correction, move up, right now move down. It is just not tradable. Aussie dollar is right now just not tradable. Let's just uh, be honest and uh, potentially step aside. Step aside because this is a market to be losing money on. Okay, that's Aussie dollar. Very likely I'm not going to trade it because it's just so uncertain. If you're looking to trade an Asian market like NZD, um, Aussie, probably the NZD could be a little bit better because what we have right here is we have actually taken the previous monthly high. So some sort of liquidity has been taken and overall bearish candle so far. I mean, we are five days uh, from creating a potential monthly bullish imbalance. Are we going to right now push lower and invalidate this? If we invalidate this, then that could be a bearish signal for next month. Are we going to make it? If we make a, a monthly bullish imbalance, then that could be a very hard time coming into next month because it's going to be a lot of support there. Now, on the weekly time frame, similar to the Aussie dollar, we also have this weekly bullish imbalance and it just doesn't bother tapping, right? We have right now five weeks. Yeah, I'm taking my words back. Five or six. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five weeks, just not moving, dropping onto the daily time frame. Ah, no. So, I mean, the very latest thing we had was this. It tapped. And right now it's trying to do something. I do believe this weekly bullish imbalance could be a potential drawn liquidity, something that the market could be gravitating towards right now. Uh, but then you drop to the time timeframe and you're just like, what the hell is happening? So you're working with this sort of price action, which absolutely tells me nothing. So, okay, I'm just going to say the same as I said with the Aussie dollar. This is just not clear. This is not tradable. If you do get some four hourly shorts, some four hourly bearish imbalances, something to actually look good, because this doesn't look good. This doesn't have a single imbalance here. It had a massive bullish and then it just started doing nonsense. So this to me is not conviction that the market wants to go lower. But if you do get, for example, a very nice expansion, right, there could be a quick trade towards that weekly zone. And then as this weekly zone taps, you got to wait to see if it's going to reverse. You got to wait uh, for the reaction because very likely there is going to be a reaction for that weekly zone. So I'm a short term bearish here, but I'm just overthinking right now. And personally, I am not touching Aussie dollar and NZD dollar. Let's have a look at Mr. Gold. So we're having that monthly bullish imbalance on gold that is going to be a very interesting place to be trading from. And again, you can see this month, after all of that volatility, this month rather slow, right? Rather slow. The month of June rather slow. We're about to get into July and August, which are usually even slower, uh, especially August. So, yeah. Weekly time frame, no imbalances whatsoever. So nothing to extract from there. This week, the market came up. It swept the previous weekly high and rejected, which is great. Does the daily time frame give us any information? Not really we just have this daily imbalance but we've we've stayed here for an eternity we had this very nice pop up and then this very nice pop down so i really do like this formation that's a very nice liquidity grab formation here massive bullish candle to to make everybody think that the market is going up and then whoop on the next candle just sweep previous daily high and then just a massive sell-off right so right now we we don't have within within this kind of area here we don't have anything on the daily to potentially stop price so that could mean the market might want to run towards these lows here so as i start making my way to the forward time frame this is where right now you go to traders would like to spend your time on because the daily doesn't have much right now so all you have to work with is the forwardly and the forwardly is giving you this beautiful expansion right there this is beautiful two consecutive poly bearish imbalances right so what i would like to see right now on gold is potential pullbacks and then potential new imbalances to guide me towards that liquidity point 
And of course, in the meantime, you can mark your, um, for example, your intermediate lows like this. So for example, those are, uh, that those are lows that could potentially cause the market to react a little bit before it rushes actually to the major main low. That is this day low. Okay. So that's gold. I am bearish in gold. It does align with the bullish dollar and with the overall bearish sentiment across the majors. Just want to see these forward zones holding and just want to see my setup. So gold actually looks good. I could focus on gold rather than focusing on a pair like uh, GU, AU or NU. So EURUSD and gold are my favorites for now. So what I learned this year is that when the dollar is sleeping and when you're getting choppy markets, very likely the JPY is doing something. So monthly time frame on USD JPY, very nicely expanding higher. Weekly time frame, look at this, we slept on all the pairs this week. USD JPY is expanding. However, one, two, three, four, five weeks before that, we were doing nothing. So don't get that shiny object syndrome right now. So for example, this week I could say right now, ah oh man, like your USD, all USD, they are just crap. But look at UJ. I'm gonna go trade UJ. And exactly when you go when you, when you do this and you go to trade a new pair, it starts chopping on you. So stick to your guns, okay? Or, of course, have that um, feeling of a flow. Maybe if you are checking a lot of pairs, maybe if you check that uh, the USDJ right now looks good, that if the USD is consolidating, then maybe you switch to trading USDs. Uh, sorry, JPYs at that time. But again, I don't like doing this because I just much prefer to just trade my two main pairs. I don't care what anything else does, okay? So very nice expansion on the weekly. We're getting very close to the liquidity. So very likely we're going to be taking it. Very, very likely we're going to be taking it. We're having this very nice uh, daily bullish imbalance again. And you can see these two candles, that big move happened on Thursday and Friday. And very likely it didn't even give a setup, right? Oh, well, there was a setup here from this fall imbalance. The market taps in and just rallies higher. So hopefully somebody got that. Right now we have this daily zone and we also have this forward zone and judging by how this market expanded even on the foh we very likely even have a one hourly zone okay not yet not yet so i'm absolutely bullish on usd jpy i mean we could be looking right now for some sort of pullbacks hopefully pull back into this forward zone and then just a very quick trade into that massive drone liquidity here when that massive liquidity is taken keep in mind that this is a monthly and a weekly liquidity point so when the market takes this one out it will potentially want to rebalance something on a similar time frame so either something on the monthly something on the weekly or maximum something on the daily okay so as we take out this high don't chase the market on the following on the, on, on the one hourly all right wait for at least a daily pullback and a daily imbalance to be refilled okay so that's my outlook on USD JPY. Looks pretty good. Looking to actually trade from that fall zone. If you are a JPY trader, definitely look into it. Let's have a look at Euro Yen. Now, of course, Euro USD being weak, uh, but USD JPY being so strong, this one is probably going to be somewhere in the middle. We can see on the monthly time frame we are getting that bullish rejection. This week, also a very nice bullishness. Uh, we are actually taking out this high which is uh, quite an important point because that is a weekly. That is a weekly zone here that we're taking. Yeah, I think we're taking it. And then, of course, the next zone that we have is here. So currently, if we're taking a weekly zone, then we'd like to continue from something on the daily, which we don't have right now. Uh, we do have potentially a new uh, potential daily imbalance to be created if we do not cross this line. So I'm waiting on Monday for a daily candle to print and then if we do have a potential daily imbalance on euro jpy that is when i'm going to be attacking it okay that that is simply my plan because right now i can drop onto the volatility time frame and uh, we are potentially yes having this volatility zone that definitely could be something that the market could continue higher from but i would much prefer to see a daily imbalance because right now as we take this massive liquidity which is a weekly liquidity right and even a yeah, it's not even a daily. This one is 
quite weekly because here we made a high it's a swing high and the market pulled back all right so weekly liquidity usually you want to see something on the weekly rebalance or at least minimum the daily so again looking for monday looking how monday is going to be playing out of course i am i want to say i'm long bias on euro yen but when for example your usd if your usd decides to go short very badly then that is going to influence ej as well but as long as usd jpy is also very bullish pairs like ej and gj will also be a little bit more bullish okay that's ej let's have a look at gj also very nicely expanding higher and uh, we're kind of reaching some sort of territories that we haven't been uh, since 2008 and uh, that is kind of tricky and interesting at the same time so dropping onto the weekly time frame we had a weekly pullback again you can see we're taking out this monthly high oops that is a yeah it was a previous monthly high but it's also a weekly swing high and then the market would like to rebalance something on the weekly it did that and right now it's starting to follow through a uh, very nice bullish candle uh, we don't have anything else to be working with right now on the weekly so dropping onto the daily time frame yeah also nothing on the daily so once again similar to the um ej example we're having a potential not this line we're having a potential uh, daily imbalance printing. But again, we have to be looking for Monday to close. If we have a daily imbalance on Tuesday, okay, I'm going to be really interested to be trading it because then, of course, we, all, we can also have this as our OB, this very massive sell to buy, but it's only going to be valid if there is an imbalance here. So waiting for Monday to pass on EJ and GJ, form that daily bullish imbalance. And if that happens, I will be interested to trade. Uh, there could be potentially a fall imbalance created also on market open. Uh, that could be something to potentially hold price to create that daily imbalance. But then essentially, I would like to be trading from the daily imbalance. So anything that happens on the fall it's good. You can trade it, but the very big move potentially could happen from a daily imbalance and if a daily imbalance doesn't form on monday and then if for example monday is a bearish candle like that then i'm immediately just gonna drop the pair okay so ej and gj to sum up if we have a very bearish monday i'm gonna get really skeptical i want to see a daily imbalance to be created which we're going to see if it's a fact on tuesday all right, time for some indices, starting with SPX, where we keep making all-time highs, uh, which is, again, always tricky. So on the monthly time frame, we're pushing strongly. On the weekly time frame, what we are also creating is a weekly bullish imbalance that right now could be both a uh, drawn liquidity. So the market could potentially look to pull back into the zone so you can be taking shorts. But at the same time, if it pulls back into this weekly, we can potentially continue going higher from there because you can see we're coming from this weekly zone and we're making new weekly zones here one as well so overall just bullish order flow that is great now this week's price action well we actually had this daily zone that got tapped on friday and then we had monday already expand and then after monday this week was just nothing right thursday was strange and what we're also having right now is if you watch closely is we're having a daily bearish imbalance so as i told you this weekly bullish imbalance here is super interesting because we can potentially be looking to pull back towards it okay um at the same time we have this daily but that daily let me just double check if it was already yes so we took out the high pull back into the daily reacting and failing to pretty much push higher from here so this daily zone is already taken at the same time we're getting a daily bearish zone so rather tricky right now rather tricky again when you see i'm not very certain of the bias right now something like this could potentially be nice i want to see signs that the market potentially wants to make a pullback towards this weekly zone or I want to see signs that the market wants to potentially just continue going higher and making new all-time highs because currently we don't have much signs and if i right now drop to the volatility time frame it doesn't give me anything here especially within the last within the last here the last piece of price action so i would say give it some 
time because you're working right now with this daily zone and this weekly zone. So if you start seeing signs this week that the market wants to push lower and it's giving you bearishness, then target this weekly zone. OK, but if you start seeing the market shifting and maybe starting to fail from these daily bearish imbalance, right, then you can, of course, continue going long here. It's a little bit about um, reacting once again, rather than having a very specific setup. So that's SPX. I am not bearish, but I'm also not bullish at the same time because I have nothing to potentially trade from. So I would actually much prefer to wait just to wait for that weekly imbalance to tap. And then just look for simple longs from there, because at that time, we're going to be having a very clear target, right? And when the market is all the way down there, you're going to have ample opportunity to be getting towards that high. While right now, if you try to chase all time highs, you just never know where the market is going to stop and it could surprise you. OK, so that is SPX. Let's have a look at the others. All right, having a look at Nasdaq, also pushing towards all time highs on the weekly time frame, also very similar to the SPX. We're having that beautiful weekly bullish imbalance. So looking also at the candle anatomy of this candle here, it has a very large wick on top, which means that there is a very sharp rejection coming on the on the daily and on the quarterly, And that could potentially make it easy for us to pull back into this weekly zone. So we know, for example, on SPX, you can see the candle is not that weak. It still has a very nice uh, wick on top, but this one is weaker. So on the daily time frame, do we have that daily imbalance? Yes, we do have it. All right. So, so the setup that I would love to see is pull back on the into the daily to take us into the weekly. That's it. Now, it really depends on what the market does first. Like if it first taps into the weekly, then of course you can start looking for longs, but then this daily area is going to be a potential reaction area and then to maybe potentially get broken. But if we do pull back first into the daily, take a short, drive it into the weekly and then from the weekly, start looking for longs. That is going to be the absolute ideal scenario. On the 40 time frame, we don't have anything. Price is very close to that weekly imbalance. So it can do it in, in many ways. It's, it's really hard. I would even say it's impossible to predict what is next. Could push lower, tap into the weekly. Then it can start reversing. Great. Could push higher, tap into the daily. Take a short into the weekly. And then, of course, you have to see what's going to be happening. Okay. So that's the overall vibe of SPX and NASDAQ. They both have a potential. Uh, they do have a daily bearish imbalance that could take us into that weekly zone. And uh, yeah, the month is going to close as a very massive bullish candle, which is great. So again, we don't have a monthly zone to work with. So we're going to be working with that weekly zone, which is going to be very key going into next week and even already into next month. So I'm overall bullish bias on the indices, but on the short term, I am seeing a potential short into that weekly bullish imbalance on NAS and SPX. Let's have a quick look at US 30, which is always kind of the black sheep. It always moves differently. So here we're having that monthly bullish imbalance that we pulled back into. We popped higher. And then this month so far, you can see we're not doing much. We're not doing much. The, the other ones are just rocking higher. This one, mm, not doing much, which is why I think just US 30 is, um, is not loved by a lot of uh, indices and futures traders. So right now we have on the daily, we have this daily bearish imbalance, which is the very last thing we have. Uh, but this daily bearish imbalance got tapped here. So that no longer exists. So bullish candle here on the daily. Uh, sorry, this is the weekly. Okay, so the weekly no longer exists. Okay, okay, that's that's actually good. And then dropping on to the daily time frame, we're having this very nice daily bullish imbalance. We also have one here. Um, yeah, so this one is just giving me bullish vibes, but how certain I am just looking at the overall narrative also of the index market, not as much, not as much. Now, the very key thing here is to potentially check out your broker, because to me, this weekly bearish imbalance tapped here. So if it has tapped here, it no longer exists. But maybe if you go to check, for example, US 30 on, um, I don't know, Black Bull. 
it also tapped so then if you check us 30 maybe i don't know again try it out so let's try eight cap it also tap no so you can see here oops let me just double check yeah here it is equals so the high i'm looking here the high of this candle is 157.92 958.11 so it actually went higher by a little bit yeah yeah you can hear you can see it so i would say back to my chart i would say that this overall imba weekly imbalance is filled so the market is not going to be reacting from that which is why i pay so much attention to it so we're having these daily bullish imbalances so to me if you're trading us 30 it just looks like longs and it looks like a very nice long so if you're trading this pair then uh, definitely look into longing but i do see short term short incoming onto the other ones so how us 30 will react to that i don't know us 30 i just don't like it it doesn't work with the way i trade right now so not looking at it at all all right going back full circle so we do have a little bit of a clarity for next week overall we're having that bullish dollar sentiment which means that of course the major pairs are going to be bearish now on the DXY, we're right now taking daily liquidity and yeah, I would say daily liquidity. So I would like to see a rebalance either on the daily in the form of a daily imbalance that could potentially even form after Monday closes or maybe even this one below or potentially something on the time timeframe. So I'm looking for more signs that the dollar wants to just continue higher, which means that EU is going to be my main favorite pair because it's pretty much the exact opposite of the DXY. We're also having a daily bearish imbalance. We're also having some uh, a quality zones to potentially hold price. So how it's going to develop and which one is going to hold, we don't know. But of course, eventually, we're looking to be taking out all of these lows. GU is also giving us very nice, very nice vibes. I would say EU and GU are my favorite pairs for now, together with gold. Together with gold, because gold has been chopping. But I really do like this Thursday and Friday bullish bearish formation. And uh, how we have this monthly imbalance just resting here that is not yet pulled back to, which makes a very nice drawn liquidity. And right now on the forward time frame, if you start getting a continuation of that very nice momentum, it would be very nice. On the other hand, Aussie dollar and NZD dollar just don't. Just don't touch them because they are choppy as hell. USDJPY getting very close to uh, a very important high here so if you can catch some longs towards that high that would be great but as this high is taken then i would say be a little bit more careful ej and gj the only time that i'm gonna trade those is if they form a daily imbalance on tuesday so monday should not cross these lines here that is my daily imbalance and validation line if we do cross them then a, a no imbalance will be formed which to me is going to be sketched so i'm only gonna go long on these two if they have a new daily bullish imbalance to work with. And for the indices, um, SPX and NASDAQ are looking like shorts potentially towards that weekly bullish imbalance that both of them have. And as that weekly bullish imbalance gets tapped, then potentially we can be looking for longs. While US 30 is already starting to give longs, but if you overall look at US 30, it's, um, it's an, an overall consolidation, but it's also coming from that monthly bullish imbalance, right? So, um, but that monthly bullish imbalance already tapped and fulfilled the target. And right now we're pulling back into some weekly zones. It's it, US 30 is always a bit tricky. And I know a lot of you don't trade it. So of course, NASDAQ, SPX, they're always cleaner. So the week looks, I would say, bright ahead. But again, you have to be really flexible and you have to be really reactive because there are there are no setups that are just very certain something that you really look for and even if you're very certain of something it could always change your zones can always get broken news can come out it can always invalidate your setup your setup might not work out so always keep an open mind don't analyze too much don't predict too much just react so that's for this weekly outlook let me know what you think let me know how you performed and i'm gonna catch you up on the next one